Hi everyone, uh, it's Johanna again. I thought that I might do a sort of soft-spoken reading from a book that I really like. It's called Horseradish, Bitter Truths You Can't Avoid by Lemony Snicket. And Lemony Snicket is famous for the series of unfortunate events. And while the truths listed in this book may be thought of as bitter, that doesn't mean that they aren't also sweet, I think. So here we go. One day, when your mother is yelling at you, you might begin to hear a tiny voice in your head that will tell you that you are right and your mother is wrong. Over the years, this voice might get louder and louder. You might find that you prefer listening to this voice instead of your mother's voice, particularly if she has been yelling at you this whole time. The expression, those who can't do, teach, is a curious one, because if you look at the world, you see that teachers aren't particularly worse at doing things than anyone else. So perhaps the expression might be better worded as, nobody can do anything. Anyone who asks you to describe your summer vacation in writing and probably has a secret, infernal plan, and under no circumstances should you include your report even a hint of the truth. People often suggest, when there is no entertainment available, that one twiddle one's thumbs. Twiddling one's thumbs simply refers to an activity in which one's thumbs are rotated quickly in tiny, continuous circles. And twiddling one's thumbs is even more tiresome than people who suggest twiddling one's thumbs. So I recommend that the next time someone suggests you twiddle your thumbs, you find something else to twitter instead. An apocryphal story. The word apocryphal here means obviously untrue. Tells of two people long ago who were very bored, but instead of complaining about it, they sat up all night and invented the game of chess so that everyone else in the world, on evenings when there is nothing to do, can also be bored by the perplexing and tedious game they invented. Wishing, like sipping a glass of punch or pulling aside a bearskin rug in order to access a hidden trap door in the floor is merely a quiet way to spend one's time before candles are extinguished on one's birthday cake. It is always cruel to laugh at people, of course, although sometimes they are wearing an ugly hat and it is hard to control yourself. Everyone should be able to do one card trick, tell two jokes, and recite three poems in case they are ever trapped in an elevator. An associate of mine once wrote a novel called Corridors of Power, which told the story of various people discussing 
how the world has become a corrupt and dangerous place, and whether or not there are enough people with the integrity and decency necessary to keep the entire planet from descending into, into despair. I have not read this novel in several years, because I participate in enough discussions on how the world has become a corrupt and dangerous place, whether or not whether or not there are enough people with the integrity and decency to keep the entire planet from descending in despair without reading about it in my leisure time. There are those who say that life is like a book with chapters for each event in your life and a limited number of pages on which you can spend your time. But I prefer to think that a book is like a life particularly a good one, which is well worth staying up all night to finish. A library is like an island in the middle of a vast sea of ignorance, particularly if the library is very tall and the surrounding area has been flooded. Sometimes words are not enough. What happens in a certain place can stain your feelings for that location just as an ink stain on a white sheet. You can wash it and wash it and still never forget what has transpired. A world, a word which here means happened and made everybody sad. Deciding whether or not to trust a person is like deciding whether or not to climb a tree because you might get a wonderful view from the highest branch or you might get simply covered in sap. For this reason, many people choose to spend their time alone and indoors where it is harder to get a splinter. If an optimist had his left arm chewed off by an alligator, he might say in a pleasant and hopeful voice, Well, this isn't too bad. I don't have my left arm anymore, but at least nobody will ask me whether I am right-handed or left-handed. But most of us would say something more along the lines of, Ah, my arm, my arm. If one's safety is threatened, one often finds courage one didn't know one had. one often learns that one's companions can be of even less help in extraordinary circumstances than one than, than they are in an average evening. Frustration is an interesting emotional state because it brings to out the worst in whoever is frustrated. Frustrated babies tend to throw food and make mess. Frustrated citizens tend to execute kings and queens and make a democracy. And frustrated moths tend to bang up against light bulbs and make light fixtures all dusty. But unlike babies, citizens and moths, leeches are quite unpleasant to be. When someone is crying, of course the noble thing to do is to comfort them. But if someone is trying to hide their tears, it may also be noble to pretend you did not notice them, so that they will not be embarrassed. It is so rare this world to meet a trustworthy person who truly wants to help you, and finding such a person can make you feel warm and safe, even if you are in the middle of a windy valley, high up in 
the mountain. On the back of the book it says, Life is a turbulent journey fraught with confusion, heartbreak, and inconvenience. This book will not help. I hope you found this relaxing, and if it wasn't relaxing, I hope maybe you got a chuckle out of some of the things in the book. Either way, thank you for watching.